The punditocracy is as yet divided as to who won last night's Republican candidates debate. Michelle Bachman for being noticed in this one, unlike the last one. Mitt Romney for seeming like he knew where his sentences would end when he started them, which was a stark contrast with Governor Rick smile and nod and grimace and lose the point Perry. If you watched the debate, it is, of course, your call as to who won this thing. But there's really no debate over who lost last night's debate. The clear loser of last night's Republican candidate's debate was a 30-year-old man who has a good job but who does not have health insurance. He is the clear loser of last night's debate for the stark reason that the audience at the debate wants him dead. A healthy 30-year-old young man has a good job, makes a good living, but decides, you know what, I'm not going to spend $200 or $300 a month for health insurance, because I'm healthy, I don't need it. But, you know, something terrible happens, uh, he, all of a sudden he needs it. Who's going to pay for if he goes into a coma, well, for example? In, in who, society, who pays for that? In a society that you accept welfareism and socialism, he expects the government to take care well, of it. what do them. you want? But what he should do is whatever he wants to do and assume responsibility for himself. My advice to him would have a major medical policy, but not before. But he doesn't have that. He doesn't have it, and, he's, and he, needs, he needs intensive care for six months. Who pays? That's what freedom is all about, taking your own risk. This whole idea that you have to prepare and take care of everybody. But, Congressman, are you saying that society should just let him die? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. America should handle the problem of people who get sick and don't have health insurance by letting them die, says the audience, exclamation point. I practiced medicine um, before we had Medicaid in the early 1960s when I got out of medical school. I practiced at Santa Rosa Hospital in San Antonio, and the churches took care of them. We never turned anybody away from the hospital, and we've given up. The state with the lowest percentage of people with health insurance in the country uh, is Texas. NBC News this morning asked Texas Governor Rick Perry how he felt last night when the crowd shouted out that uninsured people should be left to die. Last night, uh, we had heard some audience members cheer uh, when a question, I think it was posed to Ron Paul about letting someone die. Yeah. Did you hear that? What was your reaction? I did, and, and I, was, I was a bit uh, taken back by it myself. You know, the fact is, uh, we're the party of life, and, and we ought to be uh, coming up with ways to, uh, to, to, to save lives. Sounds reasonable in the abstract until you remember that before the Republican debate last night where the audience cheered letting people die if they don't have health insurance, in the last Republican debate, the audience gave one of their heartiest, biggest cheers of the night to executions, executions specifically in Rick Perry's Texas. Your state has executed 234 death row inmates, more than any other governor in modern times. Have you, 
Have you struggled to sleep at night um, uh, with the idea that any one of those might have been uh, innocent? In the state of Texas, if you come into our state and you kill one of our children, you kill a police officer, you are involved with another crime and you kill one of our citizens, you will face the ultimate justice in the state of Texas, and that is you will be executed. What do you make of uh... What do you make of that dynamic just happened here? The mention of the execution of 234 people drew applause. I think Americans understand justice. The audience was not cheering uh, one specific execution of one specific bad person in response to one specific bad crime. They were cheering the very idea of execution, specifically the idea of lots of executions, of historically high numbers of executions. Texas is killing two more of its prisoners this week, including one that was killed already today. 31-year-old Stephen Michael Woods Jr. was killed at 6.22 p.m. local time in Huntsville tonight. That's the 235th person Rick Perry has put to death in his time as Texas governor, more than any other governor in modern U.S. history. In Texas, the only interruption to the state's full speed ahead attitude towards killing its prisoners has been the lingering scandal, uh, the lingering question of whether Texas under Rick Perry killed an innocent man in 2004. Cameron Willingham's conviction was for deliberately setting a fire that killed his daughters in his home. But the conviction was based on very controversial, contested forensic evidence about the fire. After Cameron Willingham was killed, Texas set up a commission to look at forensic evidence in cases like his. Governor Perry was criticized for replacing the chairman of that commission in the middle of its investigation of the Cameron Willingham case. Perry's new hand-picked chairman sidelined the Willingham investigation. Then this week, Texas's Republican attorney general told this same commission that it is not allowed to issue any official conclusion on the evidence in the Cameron Willingham case. It could investigate the gathering and processing of forensic evidence in other arson cases, but not in the Cameron Willingham case. Whatever you think about the death penalty, whatever your position is on the issue, and whatever cases like Cameron Willingham say to you about our ethics and our governance, the broader fact here is that this issue has entered the national discussion because it is an applause line. Hypothetically, if the Texas Forensics Commission were about to announce conclusive proof that Rick Perry in Texas did execute an actually innocent man, does anyone believe even that would hurt him with this year's Republican voters? Congressman. Are you saying the society should just let him die? Yeah. No. Yeah. Your state has executed 234 death row inmates more than any other governor in modern times. Have you? We'll be right back. Hill, who is a soldier serving in Iraq. In 2010, when I was deployed to Iraq, I had to lie about who I was because I'm a gay soldier. And I didn't want to lose my job. My question is, under one of your presidencies, do you intend to circumvent the progress that's been made for gay and lesbian soldiers in the military? Yeah, I, I... Speaker Gingrich, you recently said black Americans should demand jobs, not food stamps. You also said poor kids lack a strong work ethic and propose having them work as janitors in their schools. Can't you see that this is viewed at a minimum as insulting to all Americans, but particularly to black Americans? No, I don't see that. No. So your ex-wife gave an interview to ABC News and another interview with the Washington Post, and this story has now gone viral on the Internet. And she says that you came to her in 1999, at the time when you were having an affair, she says you asked her, sir, to enter into an open marriage. Would you like to take some time to respond to that? No, but I will. I think, I think the destructive, vicious, negative nature of much of the news media makes it harder to govern this country, harder to attract decent people to run for public office, and I am a... You would begin a presidential debate on a topic like that.